Hello again and welcome to another Warhammer 40k Mordian Glory video. In today's episode, I'm going to be covering another quick tip tactica, and we are going to be taking a look at the Gatekeeper. If you're new to this series, then how it works is I go through a powerful and cool combination that you can do with the new Guard Codex. The idea behind these videos is it allows players to quickly absorb a new tactic or combination into their army, and they're pretty simple to do. You don't need a big old wrinkly brain to understand this. You don't need to be able to play 4D chess to absorb this information and put it into practice on the tabletop. In fact, I would describe many of these tactics as plug and play. It means that no matter what style of guard army you're going for, maybe it's an armored one, maybe it's a hybrid one, maybe it's a heavy infantry one with just a couple of tanks supporting it, it doesn't matter. Many of the tactics are plug and play and they can be used by any style of guard army and any kind of guard player. But without further ado, let's dive straight into today's episode. So what do you need for this tactic? Well, the first thing you're going to want is a Lehman Russ tank commander with a battle cannon. Once you've got that, you're going to want to get the relic gatekeeper. Now, Gatekeeper is a relic battle cannon, and it can only be given to a Lehman Russ tank commander. So that's why we've not just gone for a standard Lehman Russ. Now, this relic battle cannon is a big improvement over the standard battle cannon. To be honest, it's probably one of the best damage dealing relics that you've got in the codex. Now, it comes with a 72 inch range. It's heavy D3 plus six number of shots. It's strength nine and it's AP minus three and it's a flat damage three. In comparison to the standard battle cannon, it has got the same range, a much more reliable number of shots, a better strength and a better AP and the same flat damage three. Now, to be honest, you could stop there. You could just have a tank commander with a gatekeeper and have a great time rocking around the battlefield, but you wouldn't be getting the most out of this unit. You see, you want to take the meticulous calibrated tank ace as well. The reason why you want to take the meticulous calibrated tank ace is it means that each time this model makes a ranged attack, the target does not receive the benefits of cover against that attack. Now, this is really nice for two reasons. Firstly, if your opponent is hiding behind some dense terrain, then it doesn't matter. You ignore the benefits of cover. That means that when you're shooting across it, normally you'd be at minus one to hit, but now you're not. So you still get to hit them on a three plus with your gatekeeper. On top of that, it gets past one of the most frustrating things in Warhammer 40k, Armor of Contempt units dug into cover. We've all been there. Space Marines with their intercessors dug into cover, or maybe some thousand sons from Scarver Colts dug into a bit of light cover, and you're hitting them with your weapons. They're just like, well, if you hit with the Abermas 3, if I'm an intercessor, I'll still get a 4 up save. You know, I've got a good chance of passing that. Or if they're a Terminator, it's like, oh, well, you know, I'm still going to be on a 3 up save if you hit me with that. Now that you've got the Gatekeeper, now that you've got Meticulous Calibrator, it means that those intercessors are going to be down to a five up save, even with Armor of Contempt and Cover, because you're just ignoring the cover. They don't get light cover. And even if they're a Scarab Cult Terminator, you're starting to punish them down to something like a four plus save, which means every single time they fail that four plus save, thanks to your flat damage three, you are picking up a Terminator every single time. So it just really helps get past those really tough units that are dug into cover. I mean, what's not to like? That combination of high AP and ignoring cover, when you think about it, it's the best of both worlds. A lot of units in the Guard Codex and in 40k in general either have a low AP and the ability to ignore cover, such as the Eradicator Nova Cannon, or they've just got straight up high AP. This means you get the best of both worlds. You get to have the high AP, which means if you shoot something that's not in cover, you're still doing a lot of damage to it, and you get to ignore cover, which means that there's no safe place for your enemy to hide. Now, if you wanted to take this tactic a step further, you could also give this tank commander a warlord trait like lead by example. Now, what that would do is it would mean that he could order himself to use gunner's kill on sight. Suddenly, you've got an incredible incredibly powerful unit at that point. You've got something that's ignoring cover, it's flat damage, it's got the strength that's going to win pretty much anything on the game on twos and threes, it's got high AP which means people are going to be on their vulnerable saves and you're going to be ignoring any problems with dense terrain and re-rolling ones. The amount of reliability that that is going to give this tank is very, very big. The only reason you might not want to have lead by example on this tank is if you're taking another tank commander 
in the plasma death ball tactic. Now I talked about that tactic in another one of my videos. Don't worry if you've not seen it, I'll link it at the end of this episode. But if you're not planning on taking the plasma death ball tank, then I really don't think you can go wrong with taking the meticulous calibrator gatekeeper combination and slapping lead by example on that as well. The good thing about the plasma death ball and the gatekeeper is they're not mutually exclusive. You can absolutely run both. There's no problem whatsoever. If you run the execution of plasma death ball, that will need lead by example to stop it from, you know, hurting itself and blowing itself up with overcharged plasma shots. But the gatekeeper, it doesn't really need the reroll ones. It, it's nice if it's got it, but the fact that it's going to be ignoring dense terrain means that most time it's going to be hitting on threes anyway it's already pretty reliable and so if you took both these tactics side by side you would have a gatekeeper hitting on threes with no rerolls and you'd have a plasma executioner going through dense terrain hitting on fours rerolling ones basically that comes out to both tanks hitting on threes on average i don't know the exact math hammer but that's roughly how it works out which means you've got two very reliable damage output vehicles so the end result is is that you've got a tank that's already rocking one of the most powerful relics in the book and you're just making it even better and you can run this tactic alongside another one to make sure you are getting the best out of your guard tank core but those are just my thoughts let me know what you think about the gatekeeper down in the comment section below do you like this tactic or do you prefer the plasma death ball would you run both or one or the other let me know down in that comment section if you've really enjoyed today's episode then please consider becoming if you've really enjoyed today's episode or you found it particularly helpful then please consider becoming a channel member or patreon supporter it is thanks to the generous support of my channel members and my patrons that i'm actually able to do more doing glory full time now and that means i'm able to put extra effort and research into every single single one of these videos. One of the big perks of becoming a channel member or Patreon supporter is you gain access to the Mordian Glory Discord, which is an online community of over 700 active members. It's one of the friendliest, safest and funnest communities that I've ever had the pleasure of being part of. And there's always someone to chat to in there. You've got people talking about memes, tactics, hobbying, lists, painting there's all sorts of great stuff going on in there so that sounds like a ton of fun make sure that you become a channel member or patreon supporter and get yourself into that discord and i just want to take a moment to say a big thank you to all of the latest channel members so thank you to pyrostorm bob Lowe, Marcello, david lord biscuit james harrison sun gohan 101 sugar high Kristen august peter packard brian david mobius 1105 Compy Guy, Infernia Gaming, Best Ubu, Orange Girls, Dylan Smith, and Mike Zisby. Thank you guys for becoming channel members. Thank you for doing your part. I also want to do a shout out to the latest Patreon supporters as well. So a big thank you to Old Bean UK, Nicholas, Rob, Sam, Brett, Chansey, Benjamin, Justin, Devon and Canadian Goose. Thank you guys for your ongoing Patreon support. Now, last but certainly not least, I want to say a personal, heartfelt, proper thank you to all of my top tier Patreon supporters. These are the war masters, the people who have truly gone above and beyond the call of duty. So a massive thank you to Bon Bon Vert, Phil French, Ross Miller, Tequal, Alex Dengal, John Stubbs, Nick Walsh, Sawfish Trombone, Diesel Fox, Tom Sutton, and August Varney. Thank you guys for your very generous support. It is a big reason of how I'm able to do this gig full time now. I hope you all enjoyed today's video. Thank you for watching. And of course, as always, I'll see you guys next time.